welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is riding the wave. Sometimes emotions just seem to come out of nowhere. And uh, we want to make it, we want to understand where they come from. But sometimes that's elusive at the very least. So um, we get to learn to ride the waves of those ebbs and flows of emotions. So that's what we'll talk about today. But before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together, vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the pressure, the temperature, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to be here with you this morning. And uh, today we're talking about riding the wave of emotion. Uh, it's, it, it's interesting how every now and then, and this happened to me this morning, so that's why this is our topic for today. Um, emotion just came out of nowhere. And I couldn't even identify what exactly the emotion was, you know? So it's interesting to notice how uh, when we're feeling something, we want to name it and explain it. And um, it's it's so reflexive a tendency to to just try to figure out the reasons for something it i was i was watching something i was actually watching te, an episode of ted lasso which is a, it's an awesome tv show by the way pretty inspiring in so many ways but um something it, it, they were talking about following your purpose, which is very much what um, the work that I do with coaching clients is about. And, and very much what life is for me is, is sourcing and expressing our purpose. And um, this one character realized that he wasn't following his purpose and he made the choice to do so and off he went and I just teared up and I was looking at what what's that about you know it's, it's like I was so deeply moved um, at the prospect of someone really making a hard choice and following their purpose. And um, what I've, I found myself doing is 
launching into this inquiry about, well, what's going on for me? Because first of all, I normally would watch that and just be like, yeah, you know, that's awesome. And here there was just this incredible well of emotions. So I was looking at what is that about? And um, I didn't come to a conclusion. You know, I, I believe that I am following my purpose uh, or expressing my purpose. However, there was all this emotion and, and I found myself trying to figure it out. And I didn't get there. However, um, I got to notice how much of a drive I had to solve this mystery and to try and understand where all this emotion was coming from. And I looked into, well, is it a heart opening? Is it sadness? Did something happen that I'm picking up psychically? You know, it, it was fascinating to watch myself in that process of trying to figure it out, trying to understand what was going on. And it wasn't easy to just let go of it, you know, to just allow that it is what it is, you know, to, to pay attention, to be aware, and to allow life to reveal itself. You know, if there's something more for me to know, it may unfold then for me uh, in my understanding, in my awareness, and just to pay attention. So it was an opportunity to come to a greater alertness, to come to a, a place of greater attention and um, I think that we can uh, emotion is just one expression uh, or or one wake up to ride the wave and it's the wave of experience, the wave of events unfolding in our lives, too. You know, we will often think that something is a crisis, and then it gets transformed into something else. And um, what can look like a devastating turn of events can turn into a phenomenal blessing. And um, I, heard, I heard a quote on, um, let's, let's see if I can remember it, on the, on the Ted Lasso show that I loved. It was, um, I think it was, Fear is a dragon guarding your greatest treasure. I think that might be it. Um, so like facing your fears kind of thing. And I think that this riding the wave of life, the waves, the ebbs and flows of life is sort of, I don't know how the dragon fits in, you know, maybe riding the dragon too, um, is giving ourselves space, giving ourselves the freedom to 
flow with life. Uh, when we stop resisting life as it is, we then have a greater ability to dance to dance with it, and um, rather than the struggle, we can move into the dance. And there's there's so much more richness, even in the sweet sadnesses. You know, there is there is a sweetness to um, to sadness or sorrows that we can we can relish even as we feel the pain of it. Um, I don't I don't know why you know, exactly I'm talking about sadness other than to say that there were waves of sadness that were coming up this morning too that were unexplained. Good morning, good morning, good evening, Gia. Welcome, it's so good to have you here with us this morning. Um, for those of you that hear that greeting, G is in India, so it's nighttime there when it's morning here. Anyway, we're talking about riding the wave of emotion, and um, how we, I, we look for meaning. And sometimes the emotions have a life of their own. And I think that we can look at life itself as having its own energy as well, where life unfolds and we get to move with it. And we don't know the meaning of things necessarily. You know, the, the, the meaning changes based on our perspective. We talked about zooming in and zooming out yesterday in terms of perspective and change of perspective and how um, we get to see different elements. We get to regulate ourselves based on our perspective and that that's a wonderful tool to be able to shift our sense of being in our presence and um it's always a balance you know we talk about flowing with life taking what comes, you know, allowing life to unfold. And the, it's easy to imagine that that kind of attitude puts us in a place of complacency. But there's a, dis, there's a difference between acceptance or presence and complacency. So when we're present to what's so, and we, and what I mean is accepting that this is, that what is, is riding the wave, what is, is. Um, I've never surfed, but riding a wave is not a passive experience. Uh, from what I can tell, it's not you just perch on the surfboard and ride the wave. There's there's balance, there's adjusting, there's directing the surfboard in a certain way to be dancing with the the power of the water. And so when we come into acceptance of what it is, then we're better able to capture the, the momentum of the movement to then direct ourselves more 
um, more fluidly, more powerfully, rather than trying to fight with the wave. You know, we're we're better we're better positioned to be able to move with its momentum and um so so we're not talking about complacency when we talk about allowing or acceptance we're talking about being with what's here in order to then know how to move from this place to the next place um how to be in this place it's it's like when you're looking when you're asking for directions you need a starting point you need to know where you are in order to know how to get where you are looking to go and so that's the kind of acceptance that we're talking about that's the kind of dancing with the wave or um, with the ebbs and flows of life that we're talking about is, is to find a place of deeper presence, you know, to release the struggling the struggling is resistance and we we can when we when we stop struggling then we have all the energy that we had put toward struggling that we can put toward directed intention once you know so much of the struggle that we create for ourselves is in resisting things as they are. And when we allow ourselves to see things as we as they are, rather than how we want them to be, or how we think they should be, then opportunities and possibilities appear that were completely obscured when we were trying to make things be different from the way they are so it can be painful to be with things as they are And it can be scary. And we don't, if we, if we fight to avoid that pain, then we're, we're throwing our energy into kind of a bottomless pit, right? If instead we allow ourselves to be in that pain and experience it, what I've noticed is that the pain dissipates. And um, I was working with a client yesterday who has had so much trauma in their lives and their way of being with it was to avoid it at all costs and yesterday they actually allowed themselves to experience some of that pain and in the in the courage that they had um in doing that in experiencing that pain it started to lift because it's been something they've been dancing around for so long to survive, you know, to just be in survival. 
And it's so, it, in my experience, and I'm not saying that my experience is the height of truth by any means, you need to test this out for yourself in your own life. But it's kind of miraculous when we stop denying and we stop avoiding and we stop resisting the thing that we're most afraid of. There's the dragon, right? Is guarding our richest treasures. When we allow ourselves to be with what's so, to be with what's there, then all that energy that was pent up trying to hold it down can be released. And, and almost magnetically, it takes the thing with it somehow. We human beings are so interesting. It's so interesting how we manufacture such struggle and challenge for ourselves. And how we um, magnetize to pain and hardship and suffering and there's there's so much more freedom available to us when we allow ourselves to be with what is so much more energy um And I think as we look at the what isness of things, a big part of that is our our emotional being. Even in those moments when we don't understand what it is that's going on, we can make a note and perhaps the mystery will be revealed to us and perhaps not. But we get to kind of pay homage to, you know, to recognize, to acknowledge. Wow, that was an interesting feeling. Or I wonder where that came from. Or um, noting it, noting the richness of even the inexplicable or maybe even the, especially the inexplicable. And um, to recognize the mysteries too, you know, to be able to have reverence for the mysteries, to have an appreciation for what we don't know, rather than questing for endless answers, that um, maybe there's some beauty in the not knowing as well. Not denial, but like the wonder, the curiosity, the the richness of being in the presence of something beyond our own understanding. There's so much of that. You know, isn't that what wonder is? Isn't that what magic is? Is something that is beyond our understanding, you know, that we get to be a witness to. And even, even the experience of emotion itself is something of a magical phenomenon, isn't it? 
to recognize all these, like, what is emotion? What is it? How does it emerge? Why, you know, how does we get overtaken <clears throat> by emotion? And it doesn't necessarily follow any particular rhyme or reason. It's kind of remarkable, very curious. And as we as we allow, I think i'm I'm revering curiosity more and more and more the power of curiosity because curiosity is the antidote to judgment it's an opening to wonder it's um it's a way to engage it's a it's a vehicle through which to engage with the world in a way that just gives back a hundredfold. So we can find ourselves curious and ride the wave and be on the on the journey that has its ebbs and flows. And um When we do that without the resistance, without trying to understand it all, I, I'm an understanding machine. I'm an I'm a meaning making machine. Um, but when we can allow ourselves to be with it and allow it to reveal itself in its time, there's there's a certain level of freedom and release in in that that um that i think can feed the soul so i think that's it for this morning ride the wave get on your surfing mojo <laughs> anyway that's it for today i'm mira rubin this is the core connection and I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. And as always, it's my profound pleasure and privilege to spend these minutes with you musing in the on these mornings together so much gratitude and until next time so much love to you